Welcome to uh, video number six, the last in this little series of my um, bending series. So, all right, watch the others, okay? Watch all five of the others, otherwise this won't make any sense. So, um, right, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, pitch and context of, of, the, uh, of the harp and the harp bends. Now, you're gonna need to know which note you are pitching to, okay? And ear training is a really important part of this, okay? We do so much of this, uh, you know, we listen to music, all right? And, and our ears don't lie, okay? So um, we need to listen to what we're doing. Now, if you've got the facility to have a piano, all right? In fact, just buy one of these. I mean, it costs you about 50 bucks or something, all right? But this is the best way, or a guitar, whatever, to learn how to to uh, uh, pitch your bends, okay? Now, as I said, with a bend, um, with, a, with musical notes on a piano and a guitar, it's ding, 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 ding. But with a harmonica bend, you've actually got a variation on each of those pitches, okay, to get them absolutely in tune. So, I think I've got a video, I have, I've got a video on this, I'll put a link, okay, about getting the right pitch. So check out my video in a bit more detail. But what you've got to remember here is that if you're trying to pitch to a particular note, okay, the first, this is hole three, say for example, the first bend is this. Okay, and the next bend on hole three is this. Okay. And you, you need, it's good to have a reference tool like this. You don't have to be a piano player. All you need to do is get some stickers and stick them on the notes, know what note you're supposed to be playing, all right? And then you're doing fine, okay? So, as I said in that last video, I've got my own backing tracks. But you can hear. So I'm always cross-referencing my ears, because if you, if you think about it, at some point you're gonna to need to go. How do you do that? You know, I'm missing out two bends there. Okay, that's your ear training, so you need to uh, get that pitch right. Okay, uh, most people now have a cell phone that has a voice recorder. You may have never used the voice recorder before, all right? You may not even know it's in there, but get that voice recorder and make it your number one app, okay? Just get on that, record yourself playing, because listening back to yourself, it's, it's a scary thing, listening back to yourself, all right? You don't need to share it with anybody else. Nobody else needs to hear it, okay? But listening back to yourself, that's when it'll tell you whether you are in pitch or you're not in pitch. And um, by golly, once you start hearing yourself out of pitch, you'll start really working on getting it right. Okay, so a voice recorder is a really, really great tool. Okay, it's a really great tool. So make sure you, you do that and, and listen back to yourself. I mean, even for me, before going into a studio and recording stuff, I, you know, will uh, make demos. And I'll make demos because I think, oh yeah, that's a great lick and that works really well over that. And then you listen back and you go, hang on a minute, it, it doesn't harmonize correctly or it doesn't work over that, you know? So therefore, and that's how you rework the licks and, and make them sound good, okay? So, uh, really important. Now, I'm gonna come on to my last couple of tips now, after all my rambling. Uh, if you've been enjoying this series of me rambling, um, I do teach online, um, so uh, hit me up, I'll put all the links, um, and subscribe to my channel as well, okay? So, um, now, I was taught by a guitar player many years ago about velocity, okay, and velocity is just a fancy word, a musical word for, uh, for volume, okay, and everything needs to be smooth when you play, okay. So if I'm playing a scale, all those notes are, give or take, at the same volume. If I'm playing the harp, I need to play all the notes roughly at the same volume as well, okay? Now, obviously within music, you need dynamics of high and low, but you also need to know how to control those 
notes. Okay, dynamics come because you've got control. Okay, so I'll go back. To, I'll go to the blue scale. <laughs> okay, all even. Okay, now that contained a couple of bends in there and a couple of natural notes, but I kept them all roughly even. Okay, not particularly exciting, but really important for this next point I'm going to make. Everything needs to be smooth. There's no point in learning your bends if you can't get them smoothly into your playing without them sticking out like dog's balls. I hear it all the time. People playing, okay. Yeah, just these big dog's balls, you know, spinning out, okay? You've got to keep them smooth, all right? So keep those notes really, really smooth. See if you can play the bends within context of the music so that they sound nice. We're listening to music. It's supposed to sound pleasurable, okay? So make sure the music you're playing sounds pleasurable. There's no point getting a bend really nicely if you can't get it into context of the music really nicely. Okay, so many times I hear people just say, butchering it, okay? So take your time with it, enjoy it. I hope you've enjoyed my little series of videos and uh, it's been good rambling at you, <laughs> at you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, check out my music and um, I'll see you on the next video.